for tutorial here. Uh, I am Corey from DisneyPhotographyBlog.com and uh, what you see here is a photo of uh, one of our best friends. Uh, if you ever listen to the ISO 5571 podcast, we have the Mater Topiary from the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. Uh, this shot was taken with the Olympus OMD EM5 and the uh, Leica 25mm f1.4 lens. Uh, fantastic lens, uh, highly recommended if you're a micro four-thirds shooter. Um, but looking at the photo, uh, doesn't look so hot to start. Uh, this is the pure raw file. Uh, no editing has been done to the photo either in camera or by me yet. Uh, so I'm just gonna go in and dissect it because this is one that could give some, uh, some problems uh, in the editing. So we're just gonna take it right from the top. Um, first thing, that I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and adjust the white balance. Uh, normally the Olympus tends to push out photos that have a little bit warmer of a color temperature than I like. Um, and this was right in the middle of the day, so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to change it to daylight. Uh, and that's going to cool the image down just a tiny bit for us, um, which, is, which is a personal preference of mine. Uh, now the next thing I'm going to do uh, is I really hate the way the sky looks. I think it looks terrible. So I'm going to take my exposure slider. I'm going to go all the way down to minus 65, 70, somewhere in that realm. Um, so we start to get a little bit more definition in the sky, which is fantastic. Um, while we're still working on the sky, we're also going to take our highlight slider uh, just to make sure there are no blown highlights. We're going to pull it down just a little bit. We're going to go to about minus 25, minus 30, somewhere in that range. Perfect. So um, now we're starting to see some nice definition in the sky. The monorail beam in the back, uh, even though it doesn't have a monorail on it, it's going to have a little bit uh, more definition. But now if you look at uh, Sir Tomater right here in the middle, uh, you're not going to see a ton of detail on him because we, we've pulled the exposure down so much. So we need to lift up some shadows. And with the, uh, the OMD, it has a remarkable uh, amount of push and pull that you can go ahead with. So uh, I'm going to put it up to 66 on the shadows. Um, and what you're seeing right now is something that probably looks a little bit like a tone mapped HDR. Uh, I am not a fan of that. Um, but as we progress in the editing, uh, we will we will get past that. Um, one thing that I always like to do, uh, especially with a scene like this, where you have these whites uh, on the topiary, is I like to boost the whites a tiny bit. I don't do this to every photo, but on one like this, I think it's important. Um, just gonna give it a little bit more brilliance in the white channel. And then, as I do with all my photos, I like to lower the black substantially to help the photo pop. Um, so we're, we're starting to get there, it's coming along. Uh, I will then go into the contrast slider next, uh, just to give it a little bit more punch. We'll settle somewhere around uh, 22, that looks pretty cool. Um, with this particular image, I'm not going to touch anything in terms of clarity because with the topiaries, I think it gets a little bit too messy, uh, which I'm not a fan of, but I am going to go ahead and push up the vibrance a little tiny, tiny bit. Uh, we'll say somewhere in the 22, 24 realm, uh, just to give me some nice color here down on these flowers, which are beautiful, and a little bit of blue accent in the sky. Um, next, under saturation, the sky's still not doing it for me, so I'm going to go up to right around 20. We're starting to get a little, little nice blue sky there, uh, and I think all the other colors are fairly saturated. So I'm going to go in the luminance tab, uh, and I'm going to drop them a little bit. The oranges are a little distracting uh, to me, as are the yellows, so I'm going to go ahead and pull those down quite a bit as well. Uh, also, when you're pulling down yellows, greens are going to go right along with them. So pull those down. Uh, that way, Mater starts to look a little less uh, silly. Um, with the sky, I'm going to pull down the aquas and the blues um, just so we can see if we can get a little more out of that sky. And that's starting to look a lot better, at least in my opinion. Um, so from here, uh, just to take you back to the beginning, that's what we started with. And this is where we're at now. It's starting to look a lot better. It's a lot closer. Um, but what I see here is I look at Mater, and when I lowered the the blues and the aquas in the luminance tab, uh, Mater's face, I guess his eyeballs or what you would call them, uh, they have some blue in them. 
and I, I pulled that down and I didn't like that. Um, it, it takes away from, from him as the subject. He should be bright and illuminated as, as the portrait is of him. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the brush right here. Uh, and with the brush, you can do a whole bunch of different things. You can change exposure, highlights, saturation, all sorts of things. I'm just going to go ahead and my exposure here, I'm going to boost it up a tiny bit. And then I'm going to take the brush and I'm just going to paint right over Mater's eyeballs. And by doing that, we're just boosting the exposure in a tiny, tiny bit so that it becomes more white, less blue. Nice. Starting to look good. So that's that's really all I'm going to do to that. I might go up a tiny bit more, actually. Yeah, I like that. So that looks much better, in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and click Done there. And then I'm going to uh, scroll down a little bit and do my, my usual sharpening. I'll go to somewhere in the 70s. This is a very sharp lens, especially uh, with Olympus's amazingly razor sharp, deadly accurate, super fast autofocus on the OMD. Uh, I never really have to worry about missing focus with it. Um, part of that has to do with the uh, double depth of field that goes along with the Micro Four Thirds sensor, but Olympus has absolutely nailed it. Um, so, and then we're gonna go in and mask like we always do by hitting the Option or Alt key. I'm going over until we have something like that, maybe a little more. So the sky isn't sharpened at all, but Mater is sharpened up nice. And then what I might do here is I might scroll down and do a tiny bit of vignette. I don't know. Um, not sure how I like that. A little too much. Maybe I'll go to 15 and then take the midpoint and boost the midpoint out a tiny bit. And that is looking like a, a finished product. Um, so once again, if we go back to the beginning, that's what we started with, and this is what we finished with. And if you want to see them side by side, we can click this little button here, and you've got the two of them side by side. It is a, a drastic difference, uh, but judging by my screen on uh, my computer, it only took about seven minutes to do. Um, so very simple, no Photoshop involved, no color FX filters involved, nothing. Um, so Lightroom is an amazing tool. I suggest everyone uses it, um, especially if you're budget conscious because uh, Photoshop is expensive, uh, especially with the Creative Cloud coming where it will be a monthly subscription. Uh, Lightroom will not be a part of that. Uh, it will be a one-time fee, at least for now. Um, that said, uh, if you want to check out more of our videos, you can just by visiting the website over at DisneyPhotographyBlog.com. Uh, we have daily Disney photos there, as well as some tips and tricks for you. Uh, and we also have a podcast called ISO 5571, where you can listen to myself, Ryan Pastorino, and Tom Bricker talk about the finer things in Disney photography. Uh, and we also have some iOS apps out there. Disney World Photo a Day, Disneyland Photo a Day, wallpapers for your iPad, you name it, we got it, so look it up in the App Store. That said... This is Corey, and we'll see you next time.